Welcome, everybody, to episode 196 of Fergo and the Freak. My name is the Glorious League Freak, and today we have just seen the North Queensland Cowboys get absolutely annihilated by the Sydney Roosters. The Roosters won 42 points to 16, and quite honestly, the scoreline doesn't show how poorly the Cowboys played. Um, Brett Morris was ruled out of this game before kickoff with a groin strain. There's no word on how long he'll be out with that for, but Matt Ikevalu stepped into his place, and he did all right. He scored five tries in this game and probably was unlucky to score a couple of more. It was absolutely incredible. It's really funny because on the other side of the field, on the other wing, uh, Ryan Hall hasn't scored a try, I think, in nine NRL games so far. And right at the end, it looked like he'd broken his duck but there was a forward pass just as he'd crossed over the line, unfortunately. But, uh, yeah, the Cowboys just looked absolutely terrible in this game. They had a lot of early possession, and they just didn't really do much with it, unfortunately. Um, you know, a lot of dropped balls. I mean, there was a, there was a, at least three times in good field position where Scott Drinkwater dropped the ball cold. It was terrible. He had a he had such a bad game. I would have hooked him about 20 minutes into the match. Their kicking game wasn't very good. Um, their outside backs defensively are all over the place. They're absolutely hopeless. And really, the only good things that I could take out of the game for the Cowboys, Jason Tomalolo obviously played very well. Um, I thought Reese Robinson out of hooker was all right at times, but... You know, there weren't very many bright spots for the Cowboys. I mean, the only other thing I can really think of is that Cohen Hess wasn't soft and terrible. He was just all right in this game. But I think that there are a few players in their team that, like someone like a Gavin Cooper, I think it's time to stop selecting Gavin Cooper in the side. Um, Valentine Holmes left the field very early with a leg injury. I think he's got an ankle injury that he's been carrying Um there was talk before kickoff that he wasn't going to play in this game. They played him and it, it really backfired. He was watching on the sideline with ice on his ankle for most of the game. But for the Roosters, I mean, what can you say? They did exactly what they needed to do. The scoreline, as I said, it really flatters the Cowboys. Um, I don't think the Roosters were at their best, obviously. They're missing a couple of players in that lineup. James Tedesco was very good. Um... You know, Kyle Flanagan was all right. Luke Keary was dangerous at times in the match. Um, but yeah, they did the job. And that's all you can really ask. And And I feel like that's what the Roosters are doing at the moment. They're kind of playing to the sort of level where, you know, they're not playing their best footy. And you'd expect that with all the injuries they've got. But they're getting wins. And that's all you can really ask for. It's, it's kind of the same thing that the Canberra Raiders, they're not playing great, but they're still getting the wins. And, you know, I think that that maybe shows the, the golf in quality between the top eight sides and the bottom eight sides. Um, now, with the five tries in this game, people started looking towards the record books. And it was understandable because he really he could have scored a couple more. Now, five tries doesn't get him in the top try scorers list of all time. It gets him... You know, high-ish, but not right up there with the top try scorers. So we've had seven players in the history of the game score six tries in a match. Um, we've had one player score seven tries in a match and one player score eight tries in a match. Now, the player that scored eight tries in a match, it was Frank Burge of Glebe. And he did that on June the 19th, 1920 against the university team. Now, the incredible thing about Burge was that he's a forward uh, and obviously one of the greatest players of all time. His try scoring record is absolutely ridiculous. It seems like a typo. It's that good. So he scored eight tries. Seven tries were scored by Rod O'Lone of the Eastern Suburbs Roosters in 1935 against, once again, University, unfortunately. Then we had seven players scored six tries. So they were Frank Burge, once again. He did that against North Sydney. Um, Dave Brown of Eastern Suburbs, he did that against Canterbury in 1935. In 1935, Dave Brown did it again, uh, and that one was against Balmain uh, on the 31st of August in 1935. Then the following year, 
uh, Alan Ridley of Western Suburbs on the 11th of July, 1936. He scored six tries against Newtown. We had John Lindwall of St. George in 1947. He scored six tries against Manly Warringah Seagulls. And then we had John Troy of Newtown, who scored six tries in 1950 against the Sydney, well, Eastern Suburbs they were back then. Um, so that was, it was interesting seeing somebody scores that many tries. I tell you, one of the weird things about this game was that this week they had somebody scoring um, five tries down the right-hand side of the field. Last week they had Mikasivo scoring four tries down the left-hand side of the field. So you got to be fair to the Cowboys. They're pretty solid defensively across the field. Unfortunately, they're terrible across the whole field. So there you go. Um, a lot being said right now about David Fafida and his decision about what he is going to do with his future. Um, there is talk that he wanted to go to the Titans for a season or two and then go back to the Broncos and kind of said to the Broncos, would you do that sort of contract? And they said, no, um, the Titans have reportedly offered him $1.2 million a season, which, you know, I understand it. I think the Titans do have to overpay for players, but I don't know that I look at this Titans lineup and I think that they need to reach for the stars right now. I feel like they need to sort of build their junior development base up, get some younger players in there and just sort of fill out their team to be a a better all round team. You know, they need some halves in my opinion. Um, And I don't know that you look to get somebody like a Fafita, he'd be a good player if you were looking to do a finishing touch to a team. But I worry that you spend $1.2 million on a very good forward and he's very young. And part of the, you know, part of that is just getting him to the team and hoping that he sticks around for longer than his contract. But I don't know that he is the sort of player that you target at this point, especially where the Titans are. Now, there's a counter argument to that in that you get in a quality player like Fafida, you slowly get rid of the other players out of your team and hope that you can build around Fafida. But I tell you what, it's a lot of money for a forward that would be going to a really, really bad side. And especially in this era of very good rugby league forwards, you know, he's still very young. He's still very young, but it's a gamble they're willing to take. And, Look, I guess there's worse things that you could spend 1.2 million bucks on if you're the Titans, and you know you just have to look at their lineup to see what I'm talking about there. Okay, some good news if you're a Benji Marshall fan. Benji Marshall looks like he will be coming back into the Tigers side this weekend. Um, the Tigers had named a rookie who unfortunately is injured, so it looks like Benji will be back. That's great news. I love watching Benji Marshall play. It's going to be interesting to see where they play him. Um, I, I would tend to... Look, I'd play him in the halves. I'd play him at 5'8". I think that he's going to do better than um, Reynolds is going to do, Josh Reynolds. Reynolds has been playing all right, but I think there's a ceiling on what Reynolds can do for you in attack, where I feel as though Benji is going to... You know, he can he can potentially win games for you. You know, and and that's a huge thing. So it's going to be interesting to see how that goes. Uh, So now if you're listening to this, it'll be Friday, hopefully. If you listen to it when it comes out, which you all should be, you should all set your notifications so it pops up. Uh, At 6 p.m., we've got the Titans playing the Warriors, which, you know, who knows how that game's going to go. Um, I picked the Titans in this game just because I really do feel as though the Warriors at some point are going to fall off a cliff. And I don't know when that's going to happen, but I'm going to keep tipping on it because I think they're going to lose more games than they win. And, you know, it's just the easy option. Uh, The Titans have shown every so often that they've got a little bit of something this year, but it's not much of anything. And really, I mean, there's not too many teams I'd tip the Titans against and, And so, yeah, I've gone with them against the Warriors. And then that's uh, 8 p.m. We've got the Rabbitohs playing the West Tigers. I've gone for the Rabbitohs. 
I think they've just got a couple more classy players in their team. Um, I don't really rate their forward pack. But then again, I don't really rate the West Tigers forward pack either. So it kind of evens itself out. And I just have a feeling that the Rabbitohs, you know, that just their classy players are going to get the job done eventually in that game. So that'll be interesting. Then on Saturday afternoon at 3 p.m., we will see the Cronulla Sharks play the Penrith Panthers. Obviously, I've gone for the Panthers in this one. The Sharks are missing a number of players. Another, you know, it feels like half a dozen of their players are all strapped up and carrying injuries for the poor old Sharkies. And the Panthers are in really good form. So I kind of expect the Panthers. And, you know, to be honest, if if they're a top four team and a, and a proper top four team, they need to put the Sharks away and do it pretty well. So um, I want to see Kikau used a lot better in this game. So that'll be an interesting one to watch. Then 5.30 p.m., Broncos versus Bulldogs. I really don't know what to expect out of this game. Um, I've tipped the Broncos because, you know, the Bulldogs are struggling right now. They just don't have the talent. And I keep looking at this Broncos team and I keep seeing talent. And that's the crazy thing about where they're at right now. They've got so many good players in the team and they're all young players, but they're very, very good players. They really should win this game, but with the form they're in, I mean, who knows? Who knows what's going to happen with this one? The other thing about the Bulldogs too is they make you beat them. You know, they don't just roll over and die. They really try hard considering they don't have much talent. Um, So it's going to be an, an interesting one to watch for that reason alone. Then uh, 7.30 p.m. on Saturday night, really good game coming up, Raiders versus Storm. The Raiders have had a little bit of the wood on the Storm recently. They're going to be playing down there in Canberra, so it's going to be pretty cold. Um, Let me just double check. Yeah, it's a Canberra GIO Stadium, so it's going to be freezing bloody cold, but the Storm will be used to that. They've been actually up on the Sunshine Coast from memory, so they'll have been sunning it up recently. Poor bastards having to go down to Canberra. Um, I tend to think that the Raiders' form is going to fail them here and that the Storm will beat them. The Storm looked pretty good last week, and I think that I think that if they put Cameron Smith at halfback, their halfback problems are solved. He's a very good halfback. It allows them to play Brandon, Brandon Smith at hooker, and they just look like a, a much better team that way. And if they go out with that lineup, I think that they'll win. I tend to think they'll win anyway, though, because, as I said, I think the Storm are not in very good form at all. Um, Then on uh, Sunday afternoon, 4 p.m., Knights versus Eels. This should be a really, really good game up at Marathon Stadium. Actually, it's called McDonald's McDonald's Jones Stadium in Newcastle. Um, I I kind of feel like, I mean, the Eels are eventually going to lose a game. But I feel like this might be a bit of a bubble-bursting game for the Newcastle Knights. Um, They would have to play their best footy from what I've seen of them this year. Their forward pack does tend to stand up pretty well against opposition teams. And they're really going to have to win this game against the Eels because the Eels are just... They just look outstanding. They look absolutely outstanding. I guess the only thing that the Knights can hope for is that they can pressure Jai Field and maybe get him to play really poorly. He played a solid game last week, and that really helped the Eels. And that's all he has to do is just play solid footy. And, that you know, they should win that game, in my opinion. I tipped them. And then the last game of the round, 6.30 p.m., the St. George Illawarra Dragons versus the Manly Seagulls. You would think the Seagulls would bounce back after last week. Um, you don't see many games like that from the Seagulls. And, yeah, I just think that they will they should really put one on the Dragons in that one. So that's going to be really interesting. And, uh, yeah, so that's the round coming up. And we'll probably do another podcast. We might do one on Friday night. I'll try and get Andrew on to do one after the Tigers game. Um, see what he has to say about it. But Andrew's a little bit busy at the moment. That's why he's he's not been on the podcast too much. It's a very busy time for him at the moment. And uh, I know we all miss him. I mean, he's, he's awesome. Um, so anyway, if you were wondering where you can get more Fergo and the Freak in your life, go to fergoandthefreak.com. It's our new website. It has all the bells and whistles. It has posts for every single um, episode now 
We've got a link up there for if you're looking at for history episodes because we know that people really love being able to look through the history episodes. So I've got a link on there for history episodes. You can go to that, see every single history one we've done. We've also got a link for all of our guests, um, you know, and you can click on that, see everybody that's been a guest on the show over just over the year that we've been doing this podcast. You can get in contact with us through the contact thing. You can see our um, social media links. If you look at the top of the page, you can see all the social media that we have. We've, we're on YouTube, Instagram, uh, Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook. We're on absolutely everything. And then, once you've done all of that, go to patreon.com forward slash Project and contribute to the digitization of rugby league history. Um, Andrew lets you start at $1, and all of the all of the contributions you give to him goes towards the digitization of rugby league history. That is where I've picked up all of the uh, NRL tri-scoring records. We all use it, and I would implore everyone to go on there, give to Andrew, and... Um, and if you like my website, if you like all the websites I've got, um, go to patreon.com forward slash league freak. There's no spaces in there, just league freak as is. Um, and yeah, you know, I think my one start, my one start at $3 a month. Um, I recently had Andrew, not Andrew Ferguson, but another Andrew, uh, Andrew, I'm, I, I don't know how to say your last name, Andrew. Marzalek. Marzalek. Hopefully I've said your name right. He upped his contribution from $5 a month to $10 a month. Um, so he's up into that sticker category. There's a couple more categories above that. I'll let you know what they are. I'm just on my Patreon page now. Uh, let me work out where I see this at. So I don't go on here too... I don't go on here from the point of view of somebody that's visiting it. So let's have a look here. Membership. Nope. Posts. This is riveting for you to all hear. Um, anyway, there's I think there's five different levels. The first level is $3 a month. That's like the price of a cup of coffee. And like I've had people get in touch with me and say, look, all I can... All I can contribute is three bucks a month and I feel bad about it. Don't feel bad about it. It all, it helps so much. Like, and I know I speak for Andrew as well. Any contribution that you can give is fantastic. Um, it is greatly appreciated. And even if it's three bucks a month, it's absolutely incredible. Um, the next one above on my one is $5 a month. Then the next one above that's $10 a month. And if you're on that for three months you get a free sticker the next one above that i believe is 17 dollars a month if you're on that for three months you get a free t-shirt sent out to you a league freak t-shirt and the next one i believe is 20 dollars a month and if you're on that for three months you get a free league freak mug sent out to you so it's like it's something to to try and give back to say thank you for your support at those different tiers. I would have put things in the lower tiers as well, but unfortunately Patreon doesn't doesn't have that sort of thing for under a certain level. So I've done it on the lowest levels I really possibly could because I wanted to sort of have some sort of incentive there. Um, go to leakfreak.com. I've been posting uh, a lot of different history things lately, like top try scorers, biggest wins, biggest losses, stuff like that. It's been interesting. Um, a lot of traffic for the site recently, which has been pretty cool. Uh, Fergonthefreak.com, obviously. Go to rugbyleaguepodcastingnetwork.com. I also own that. And that just celebrates the, uh, the best independent rugby league podcasts, I think, that are out there. Um, I will be adding more to that as time goes on, but there's a whole heap of them right now. It's a really good list of podcasts and, you know, you can basically guarantee that you can listen to any of the podcasts on there and you'll get a good listen out of it. So go and check that out and make that part of your um, website rotation. You can also get in touch with us by emailing podcast at leaguefreak.com. Now, I know some of you have pod, uh, emailed us recently. I'm waiting for Andrew to come on the podcast because we kind of, I feel as though them 
emails are, are best answered by both of us because you get two different points of view. Um, and I think that you'd enjoy that a little bit more than just hearing my point of view. Um, so anyway, there you go. So a, another bit of a quick episode. I hope you enjoyed it. And we will talk to you very soon. Have a good one.